Finding leaks under your slab. I'm gonna show you the first two steps and I'm gonna show you right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Finding leaks under a slab is very expensive. Actually, finding out if there's a leak under a slab normally isn't too bad. Now, I know some plumbers that come out and just do a camera, and all they do is run a camera through your sewer line. To know if you have a leak, you need to do a sewer leak test. And the right way to do it is to actually find your cleanouts where they leave your house, open them up, and stick a test ball in. You stick a test ball in, you fill it up, it's like plugging up your sewer. And when you do that, then you can fill it up, as you see, to the bottom of the slab. It'll hold the water. If there's not a leak, it's going to hold that water. We're going to leave the test on for 20 minutes, but I'm going to show you step by step how we go through to do it. And then we're also going to do a water leak test because a sewer leak test and a water leak test are the things that you need to do on a house before you buy it. Now, I teach real estate agents about this all the time, and what I teach them is it's not a hydrostatic test. I know that's what's in contracts in Texas, and some of the realtors actually have that written in their contracts. A hydrostatic test, and I know some plumbers are going to say, well, Roger, it's got water in it, and it's holding static pressure, and I understand that. But a true hydrostatic test applies external pressure, and that is not what this test is all about. We don't want to blow apart the plumbing system. All we want to do is test it to see, is there a leak under the house? And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is locate the clean. As you can see, they've done landscaping work around here, so the cleanouts were actually covered. Now we uncovered them, and I've already got the pipe wrench on them to make sure that I can break them loose, and I can. But what you're going to do is get a big enough pipe wrench on here that you can unscrew these brass plugs. Now, I will tell you this, sometimes on a brass plug, you're going to have to break it to get it out. But that's okay because you can go down to the box store, and you can buy a plastic plug to put back in there. Okay, so what I've got is a 3-4 test ball here, and I'm going to stick it in, and what I want it to do is I want it to turn and come back this way because I want to be able to see where my water level is through these cleanouts. So what I'm going to do is roll my hose up to where I can work with it, and I'm going to twist as I push it in. Now, as I go in, I can see it through this one, but it's going through here. Now, we put a wax on them to help seal them off. That way, whenever we fill we know that water's not going to leak past it. So now what I'm going to do is pump it up. And right there I'm holding at 45 pounds. So now we've got the test ball in place, we've got the hose hooked up and the water turned on. So now all we've got to do is fill it up. And what we're trying to do is fill it up to the slab level. And what I like about this is with the two cleanouts, I can actually fill through one and see through the other one and know that our water level is already coming up. Now once it starts getting full, I like to slow it down. Your water level is going to bounce up and down a little bit for the air balancing out in there going through the vents. But I like to get it right up to the top. And then shut it off. So I don't know if you can tell, I've got water coming up out of it. So I actually knocked on the door. What happened? The homeowner forgot that I was doing a test and they actually ran water. So they've shut it off. So I can see now that it's slowing down and starting to balance out right where it's supposed to be. So one thing that I like to do to validate my test is I take my phone and I put it on world clock. That way you can see exactly what time it is. So what I do is take a photo. That way I can mark the time. And here in Dallas, time is 10-11. Okay, so the next part of this test is the water. 
this. So now that I've got the sewer full, what I actually do is come over, put my pressure gauge on. So I come out here, turn the water on, look at the pressure, and it's at 80 PSI right now, which is great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the meter, I'm gonna turn the water off, and I'm gonna let it set here for 20 minutes, just like I'm doing the sewer. So now for the water leak test. What we do is we put a pressure gauge on the hose bib. And I can put it on here because there is no vacuum breaker. So I don't have to worry about it leaking. I've checked, there's no leaks on it. So I've put my gauge on, tightened it down, opened it up, and I'm setting at about 80 PSI right now, which is really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the meter, I'm gonna turn the water off and come back again and take a picture. That way I know that we're holding for 20 minutes. So now what I gotta do is open up the meter like we talked about and open up the valve box. And I get in here and I've actually got a valve, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is reach down, put my tool on the valve, shut the water off at the house, make it safe, and I'm gonna go back and take a picture. So as you can see, just like on the sewer, we set the world clock up, take a picture, that way you can see the gauge and you can see the time. We're still at 80 PSI, so what we do now is wait. So guys, as you can see, we've been here 20 minutes. We don't have any water drop, so we know that this one's good. So what we're gonna do is let the air out, and I'm pulling up on the hose when I do this because I don't want that force of water to try to pull this hose and test ball down into the main. So as it lets out air, I can pull it up and watch my water level go down. And again, remember, anytime you turn this, turn it to the right because what it's doing is it's tightening up your threads on your hose connection. And that way you don't lose a ball down in there. So keep twisting it and your ball will get to where it'll come out. And then once it comes out, you're good to go. Now, these test plugs weren't in there all the way and I don't have any new ones with me, but I wanna make sure that I put them back in loosely. That way, nothing else gets done in here. But one thing I tell people all the time is I never like tightening these up all the way anyway, because if this sewer ever does back up and the blockage is from here to the street, I'd rather it push the lid off and leak toilet paper and stuff out here than do it in the house where the homeowner may have to deal with that later. Now that we're done, we pulled the test ball out, got the lids put back on and straightened everything up. Remember, always leave it as well as you found it. So guys, again, as you can see, the gauge held where it's supposed to so we don't have any problems. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and shut the hose bib off. That way I know that we're killing pressure to the gauge. Then I can undo the gauge, take it off, and then all I have to do is turn the water back on. So guys, as you can see, we're finishing up and all we gotta do is turn the water back on. And I'll tell you what, it's really funny, but make sure you do that part. I actually sent one of my plumbers out one day to do a sewer water test and then I got a call from the homeowner later saying, hey, we just went to take a shower and we don't have any water. Well, my plumber had forgot to turn the water back on. So guys, make sure you finish every single step. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you check out some of the other ones. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.